Often with Power BI, we have simple questions, but the DAX required to answer them is a little bit more complicated. So my name is David and I have tons of videos on Power BI, Excel, Zoom, Teams, Google Sheets. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering it on my channel. And I am going to copy and paste the final formula in the description, so have a look at that. And if you want to download the file, then I have on my website where you can download the files associated with my videos. So here I have certain people, Noah, Emma, Liam, etc., who work in my organization and they have a start date and an end date. And I wanna know at any given point in time, how many people were there in my organization. But I have two columns that are related to the date table and I can't do the use relationships regular option because that is going to be able to activate only one relationship at a time. Whereas I want a formula that can keep both of these active to test have they started before or before today and have they ended after today? Or is it that the end date is blank because they actually haven't left yet, they're still in my organization. So here I have what the data would look like with the measure that we're going to end up building. The work is currently to date. And at one point, at some point it goes up, usually it goes up and then down, but there are some points where it goes down in the middle, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now we have different filters that we're going to allow for this. So for example here, I'm going to say at the 2nd of May, I want to know how many there are. There are 82 workers currently. And I'm going to prove that by going into Excel before we go into this. So here I'm in Excel and I have 82 in here. The way that we do that is we're going to use this feature called the advanced filter. It's not one that I regularly use. I'm going to clear the filters to start. And what you do is you take the column name, it has to be the exact column name, so start date and then end date, and you can do something like this. And if you put them in the same row, then it will test uh, which ones satisfy both criteria. So what I can do is I can select my data and I can go to the data tab and choose advanced here. And my list range is that, my criteria range, I just select it to be this. Enter, and then I can see that there's 82. I could add something else. For example, I could add brand to be Dell. And then I can say from this one advanced, and then my criteria range is going to be for these three and then it's going to reduce it to 16 rows. And now my Power BI, if I filter to Dell, it's going to be just 16 there, which is the same number that I had earlier. So what are we going to do for this? So we're going to create a couple of measures to build it up. So how many people started that day first? So to set up the data model, it's best to have the two tables with no active relationships. If you have an active relationship, then all of this is going to break. So if I make this active, then I go back here, all of these are showing me one. So that's not what we want. We want either no relationship or inactive relationships. Uh, in this case, we're going to have one inactive relationship because we still wanna know how many people started that day that we want to activate. So I'm going to go to a new measure. So let's start with one measure and we'll get more and more complicated as we go along. So here we go, I'm gonna make it big so you can see it there. I'm going to say employees equals count rows of main data, close my brackets. I'm going to number this one, I'm going to say number one so that they're all sorted next to each other. So if I add that to my canvas and make that into a table, I can see that there's 194 and that is just the number of people that there were. It doesn't matter if I filter for different dates, it doesn't, want, it doesn't do any difference because there's no active relationship between the date table and the number of employees. So I'm going to go with something that is going to be like employees who started that day. So I'm gonna to go to new measure. I'm going to say started that day, maybe two equals calculates of count rows main data. I'm going to say uh, do this but activate the relationship using use relationship of main data and start date, date table and date. So I'm just going to close a second bracket which I need to there and if I add that into my table here going to see that there are often blanks, 
but we know that the 2nd of May has 2, so let's test that. We should get 2 over there, perfect. And what is this is doing is it's going through the use relationship thing, which needs two active columns. If you make a mistake and you do the wrong column, for example, it just will give you an error. So it's a pretty easy to use one. I use this whenever I have inactive relationships. So go back to date and there it works fine. So let's start with number three. Number three is going to be how many people started that day or before that day. So three started on or before date equals calculate. And now this is going to get more complicated. I'm going to start with, again, count rows of main data, close my brackets, and then I'm going to do the filter. And for the filter expression, we need the filter function because the filter function is required if you are comparing a column with a calculation, which is what we're going to need to do. And then we need to say for filter, what is the table expression? What is the table and then the filter expression? The table is actually going to be in this case, values of main data start date. The values function takes one single input, which is usually just the column name and returns a unique values of that column. So we need that for this case because start date can have duplicates as we saw on the 2nd of May. And then we need to press a comma and our filter expression is going to be the start date is less than or equal to the min of the date table. This is so that people can use the date table as filter and it will still work. So I'm going to close my brackets once for filter, another one for calculate like that. And for good practice, it is better to use different columns, press Alt and Enter, so that you have your data over multiple rows and it's easier for the user then to read. So um, I usually would do it a little bit more spaced out, but because I'm very zoomed in, this is how we're going to do it now. So you have the calculate, which is applying filters, changing the filter parameters, count rows of the main data, where you are comparing the start date is less than or equal to the earliest chosen date here. And this is going to give me, if I click out and I add it to my table, I can see 91. And if I go back here, I can filter for start date is before and I do on or before, and then I'm going to do 03 May 2022. Okay, and I get 91 filtered rows, perfect. So that is giving me the right answer. Next, I'm gonna do the same for the end date. So I'm actually just going to be able to copy this. I'm going to go to a new measure. I'm going to say for, after, or on, end date, left equals, and then I can paste that. So I'm going to say count rows of that where filter values, but instead of start date here, I'm going to say end date. And then here I'm going to say end date again as well. And then I'm going to swap these round greater than or equal to max of the date table and date like that. And then I'm going to close my brackets, click outside, add it to the table here. It's going to be 159. Let's test our source data. So I'm going to clear all filters. And here I'm going to say is after, and then on or after. And I'm going to say 02 May 2022, press OK. And I get here 159 filtered rows. Perfect. That's now matching. Next, I'm going to add the possibility that it could also be someone who left, who, who did not leave. So in this one, I can say, well, the end date could be blank. And there are 26 filtered rows for blanks. So I'm going to say that either they left on or after that date, or they just didn't leave. So what I'm going to do is do an intermediate one. I'm going to say, how do we calculate if they didn't leave? 
This is a simpler measure. So five didn't leave equals calculate count rows of main data where the expression is end date equals blank. Close your brackets, add that measure here. I can see 26, perfect. You could have also done it by saying is blank around that one, and then you don't have to say equals blank. Slightly more efficient, it gives you the same answers. Now we're going to do a combination of four and five. So new measure, into say six didn't leave or after equals calculate. Same way starting as before, count rows main data, close your brackets there. Let's do it over multiple rows. So alt enter, alt enter again. And then I'm going to say filter values end date, close my brackets for values, and then the filter expression. Here I'm going to actually say or, because it could be two things. One of them is either the end date equals blank, comma, or the other one is end date is greater than or equal to max of date. Column table, close all of these brackets, press enter, and then I get number six. And number six should just be the addition of both of those. If I add it into my table here, I need more room. Number six is going to be, yeah, 159 plus 26 equals 185, perfect. And now we're going to say, well, both of these conditions need to be met. So we're going to combine number three with number six. So I'm going to take number six because that's the longest one. I'm going to copy that, control C, I'm going to do a new measure. Then number seven is going to be workers currently equals, I'm going to paste that. But before we do this, I'm going to say filter values start date where start date is less than or equal to min of date table. Close your brackets and that's the end of my filter expression. So close my filter and then press a comma to go to the next filter. Let's space this out a little bit. So I'm going to do the condition there, delete that, and then I've got or there and this one as well. But essentially I'm doing both calculations. So it's an and thing. It has to be started before the date and left after the date. So that's why I do a comma rather than an or thing. But then I do an or thing because they could have either not left or they could have left after the end date. So uh, I, these things get confusing when you do the greater than, less than, min, max, etc. But you want someone to be able to choose uh, a single date, but also an entire month or an entire year, because often that's how filters are in Power BI. So press enter. And let's add this to the thing. So over here, I have 82 workers currently. Then we get 82, which is the correct answer. It's going to be hard to show this in filters, but that is kind of it at that date. All right, but the issue is, if someone decides not to filter it, which happens quite often, then the workers currently is going to show them blank. But essentially, you want the workers currently to show them the number of workers who haven't left yet. So uh, we're going to finalize with number eight. So I'm going to say workers currently or not left equals if is cross filtered. And what this does is it tests whether, in this case, the date column has a filter applied either directly to it or 
whether it has a filter applied to another column in the same table or any other column whereby the relationship would filter that one. If that is true, then I'm going to do all of this. But if there's no filters applied, if false, I'm going to press Alt Enter and I'm going to say now calculate count rows of main data. Close my brackets for that, where my filter is going to be is blank and date. Kind of like we saw earlier. Close my brackets, once for is blank, another one for calculate, and another one for the entire function. Now we could have done this with variables as well, but I'm going to do it like this because it's easier to learn in this way, I think. I'm going to copy and paste this code so you can see it, but let's first add it. So back over here, it's going to have 26, but if I click on any given day, then it's going to show me the same number in seven and eight, which is perfect, it's exactly what I want. So I hope you found that useful. My name is David and I'm gonna have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. And I'm talking about a lot of these kind of DAX scenarios in a few videos that I'm releasing at the moment. Thanks for watching.